Hey community, I want to take a minute and personally invite you to the Worship Innovators Conference, taking place this year in Chicago, October 2 and 3. This entire conference is about bringing together innovators to provide practical training for worship leaders. Think of it as two days of worship boot camp where you learn all the practical things a worship leader needs to know about a Sunday morning, how to lead a band rehearsal, how to schedule people, how to find new volunteers, how to write a chord chart, how to use multi-tracks, how to sync your lyrics and lighting with your tracks. On and on and on, we have a lot of practical training where you're gonna learn how to implement technology at your church. We are partnering with the leading worship resources, CCLI, Planning Center, Onsong, Sweetwater, Worship Tutorials, Worship Tools, Sunday Sounds, Praise Charts, to bring you practical training for worship. Tickets are on sale now. Make sure you register because there's limited space available. General admission tickets are $150, or if you bring four or more people, you can get tickets for $120. There's limited space, so make sure you get your tickets now. You do not want to miss this one-of-a-kind worship conference. Practical training for your entire worship team. October 2 and 3, go to worshipinnovators.com. I hope to meet you there. What's up, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Loop Live. My name's Matt McCoy. I'm the founder of loopcommunity.com. And today I've got a very special interview. I've got Michael W. Smith with me, songwriter, worship leader, artist. You for sure have heard of his music if you're involved in, in church music at all. And so I'm really excited to have this conversation with him. So what are we waiting for? Let's just go ahead and bring in Michael W. Smith. Hey, Michael. Hey, man, how, how's it going? Thank, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Are you coming to, are you coming to us from Tennessee or where in the world are you? I actually am. I've, I've been all around the world, but I've, I've landed the plane, no pun intended, and I'm actually here right. at my home in Franklin, Tennessee. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining. Uh, you have you have had a huge impact on so many worship leaders and songwriters. And um, I'm thinking about, I was actually thinking before this interview, I was thinking about how I first heard of you. And I remember my parents were pastors of a vineyard church in Southern California, in San Diego. Yeah. And I remember my mom getting a tape and playing it in a car, like a tape cassette, and it had friends on it. And okay. I remember that was the first song I ever heard uh, from you. And then I remember Place in This World, which actually still goes down as like one of my all time favorite songs. And your live performance of it at the Doves, I think is so, so good. Um, uh, thank you. And then, of, and then of course the Worship Forever albums. My wife was telling me that when she was a kid, her favorite song when she was when she was like six years old, seven years old was Prince of Peace from the worship oh, yeah. album. Yeah, I remember that yeah. one as well. Yeah, and I just played it recently for my kids just just because I thought that they would love it. So anyways, thank you for what you have done for so many years um, to impact churches and worship leaders. And I mean, music, all types of music, really. So I'm curious if you could just tell us the story of how you started leading worship. Like who taught you, who inspired you, who got you going into even doing church music? Yeah, well, it was really after I moved to Nashville in 78 and um, I started going to Belmont Church and uh, it was such a vibrant place right on Music Road. Don Fento is the pastor who's actually 93 years old, still alive and has mentored me for 40 years. And, wow. Um, but I was just so moved by what was going on worship wise at, at back in the eighties. And yeah. I got asked to play piano one day and I just kind of thought, gosh, may, I think this is part of my calling, you know? And, and then at some point, I guess within the year, I just started leading worship. So had some mentors obviously there at Belmont. It, it's so interesting. Cause I, you know, that first worship album that came out, what I call, well, I have a whole different, analysis of worship, you know, because I think it's a, a lifestyle and we all sort of equate yeah. it to sunny mornings and music and it's so much bigger than that. But that first vertical record, Worship, which came out on actually 9-11 on, in 2001, you know, the, the day we got attacked, I, I was leading worship for 19 years before that record ever came out, you wow. know, so, but I just learned a lot from the worship leaders at Belmont and then yeah, just knew the calling on my life and yeah, there's 
nothing, nothing, it's nothing quite better, especially when you get to do it around, around the world and just really see the atmosphere yeah. shift, things happen. So, yeah. And I guess it's interesting because when I think about my question, it was, uh, you know, we are talking, I guess, about you, 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 you are involved in music in, you've got these worship albums, which are like kind of these church songs. But then you also have CCM music, like I was referencing, like the Friends and Place in This World, Go West, or not Go West, but um, like the the really early ones. And right. all the pop stuff. So All the pop stuff. Is that what you call it? Okay. Yeah. Um, and what made you want to, when you were thinking about doing the Worship Forever album, what was it that made you want to do that? Because you were coming out from a lot of pop music at that point. Well, it really was, honestly, it's a, it's a, it's a long story. I'll, t- I'll give you the short story. It, was, it happened because of what happened uh, when we were having uh, Gospel Music Week, which used to be a big thing in Nashville. Everybody would come from around the world, and we would all meet in downtown Nashville. And, yeah. And Bob Knob, and everybody's doing their thing. And I kind of, and I, there was at some point, it started to feel a little uncomfortable. Like, why are we doing this? You know, uh, it seemed to be a lot of ego and, who sell the most records. And so at some point um, it was, it was actually, it was actually the spring of 2001. Somebody came to me and said, Hey, felt the same way that I felt, you know, and, yeah. and asked if I would consider maybe starting off gospel music week with a worship service at the Robin auditorium. And maybe that would help us sort of anchor the week and kind of sort of re would just help us get out of this, whatever this funk that we're in, in terms of pride and all that. So whatever, it's a long story, but whatever. Yeah. And we, it was a good idea. I said, if I could just have some creative control, uh, yeah. I don't want to run, but I want to invite every artist to, every artist to be in the choir. Yeah. And everybody drop your ego at the door and we're all going to come and we're going to lead people in worship. And so we did. And it was um, it was a top five for me. You know, something happened. You know, you kind of felt like Jesus was coming back that night. It was just the roof came off of the place, and I thought, my goodness, this is unbelievable. And I do really yeah. think that set the pace for the week, and I think things shifted. Well, yeah. another long story short, and I'll make it quick, is that three weeks later, I I woke up in the middle of the night, and I just heard the Lord say, "For such a time as this," hmm. and I said, and I said, no. And and I knew I knew what he was telling me, and I just was I don't know what I was afraid of. Maybe I was afraid of what people would think. Oh, Smitty's going to jump on the worship movement thing because it was starting to happen. You yeah. know, with Hillsong, I think it had a record. Maybe uh, you know, the Passion Out of Atlanta might have done one thing, but I didn't even really know much about those records. But whatever, it took three times. I was woken up every three weeks, and that third time when I woke up, it was pretty, it was pretty loud. And I just said, okay, God, I'll do it. And yeah. that such a time as this, when I want you to go make what you did at the Ryman, I want you to go make that record. Yeah. And so I a bunch of artists, we all went to Lakeland, Florida, and we made this record called Worship. And yeah. wrote it in the summer of 2001. And as I said earlier, it was really released on 9-11. I thought it would be the least successful record of my career. And I didn't really care because I, I felt like this was an obedience thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's the biggest record I've ever done. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. It's so special. It's so special. So you've been in this for a long time. How have you seen worship music change over the years? And a second part of that question is like, is there anything you wish that we would get back to or anything you think that we've kind of lost as it's changed? Well, I mean, I, I think things have gotten better. and I think we got issues too, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. if I could go back and tell myself something, I would just say, you know, it's, how about you, you know, yeah. and, you know, I got some concerns about the performance aspect of worship and, you yeah. know, we're rattled and dazzled by lights. And I mean, I get that. And I think there's a healthy balance of all of that. Um, I think we need more vertical songs. I mean, you know, I was, Debbie and I were talking, my wife and I were talking about this, you know, what it said, sing psalms to one another and encourage one another. And I get that, you know, but we need just me- need more songs that de- declaring who he is. Yeah, you know, I think there's maybe a lack of that, but hey, I'm not passing judgment. You know, when I when I when I say these things and my concerns, I mean, I automatically just point them back towards me because I can I can always do better. But yeah, I just think that we got to be 
yeah, we just got to be careful and we just got to make sure that we, you know, we're, we've got a tribe and we got people we're walking with because, you know, we're, we're seeing people fall. We're seeing people kind of fall off the cliff and, yeah. and it's sad. And I just don't, uh, that's not my destiny. And I'm by the grace of yeah. God, I'm going to well. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you could go back, let's just say you're sitting over coffee with like a young worship leader who's just getting started. They're 18 years old. 16, maybe even younger, go back and tell a younger version of yourself or a young worship leader, like, what's just some advice for the road ahead? What would you say? And I think you kind of already hinted to it a little bit there. Well, I would say it's not about you. Yeah. <laughs> That'd probably be the first thing I'd say. Um, yeah. yeah, just, I mean, I, 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 you know, I think you're either gifted to do it or you're not, you know, and, mm. and unfortunately there's some people probably de- leading worship that probably don't need to be, but you know, you, 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 you have pat compassion on those people because they're, they probably have a very pure heart and it's, it's okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but I, you know, and obviously songs are important and because your job is, well, first of all, I'm trying to kind of gather all my thoughts on this is that he's looking for people that are humble. Yeah. If you're not, humble, he's not, he's, you're, you're destined to fall, you know, and, mm-hmm. Humility, I always say, what's my, every time I lead worship or even do a concert, God, let my posture be beautiful. Let me just be clothed in humility. And if there's any rock star thing coming at me, let me diffuse it. So Mm -hmm. what your posture does, you know, you're either up there being a rock star or you're sort of deflecting the glory, you know. And then, uh, yeah, and then just. Just lead with great humility, I guess. I mean, I, I could probably talk about this for a long, long time, you know. But there's a lot of there's a lot of little nuggets that I think um, are good. I think a worship leader's main objective is to change the atmosphere where God can meet people. That's your job. You just you change the atmosphere. You usher in these, hopefully, singing these songs that just sort of oof. You know, the darkness flees, and all of a sudden it, it, it makes this pathway to where people can you really hear from God. Yeah. I, I mean, I, there's probably many things I could say. But that's probably the, the main thing I would say is just, yeah. let's, let's see the atmosphere shift. What would you say your focus is right now? Like when you're in music and when you sit down to write a song, are you thinking worship or are you thinking kind of like the CCM pop world you know i'm thinking about like just it's amazing to me the broad spectrum of music you've covered with like go west young man all the way to like worship forever and like the latest worship um worship again album like where where are you at right now typically you know what i'm not really sure where i'm at um i i, I mean I, I, when i say that i never know what i'm going to write and i'm i've never um I mean, I've been intentional about certain projects like a Christmas record or an instrumental record, you know, but I, every time I sit down to try to write something that's worship or pop or I'm going to write this, it's a disaster, you know, at least for me. I'm, I'm wired different. Um, like today, I'm, you know, I just got my piano tune in my great room and I was writing what I thought were these beautiful cinematic pieces of music, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I never know what's going to come out. You know, I got yeah. a little pop little thing here and all of a sudden I got this cinematic thing. It sounds like it should be in a movie or, you know, I was writing something with Tony Wood the other day, just going, Oh my gosh, I think this is, I think there's something here in terms yeah. of, of worship, you know? So, yeah. so I think it's just, I've been doing it for so long. I don't feel like I have anything to prove. I don't need another award. I don't need another song on the radio. I yeah. just want, I, I always feel like this when I play the, I, I think of the movie. I remember when I saw the movie, uh, Cherry Sapphire and Eric Little. And when he said, and I'm, I'm, I'll never forget it when I was sitting in the theater. And he said, when I run, I feel his pleasure. Mm-hmm. And I broke down in the theater because I thought when I put my hands on the piano, I feel his pleasure. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's so amazing. Sometimes, sometimes some of this music, Maybe it doesn't need to be on a global scale. Maybe, maybe these little melodies that I write are just, I'm just playing for the king. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. 
All right, my my last question for you, and this is more of just my own guilty pleasure. This is only this is for me. This isn't for any of the listeners. I'm curious. Tell me the story behind Place in This World. Can we go uh, back that far? It was it was probably a lot of there were a lot back in the day. We were reading letters, and I had a girl that was working for me and would read all these letters I got and. And especially for some reason, young girls and they're suicidal and they're abuse and it's sad stuff, man. Really, yeah. and, and a lot of those letters inspired a lot of my songs. Hmm. But I think there was one letter I got where a girl was just she had been abused, she was contemplating suicide, and and she just said, "Man, Michael said I'm just I'm just trying to find my place in this world." I think she actually hmm. said that. Wow. And so I. You know, and I remember that, but I didn't write the melody till I actually really didn't even think about that line until I in my basement here, actually here at this house, I went down and wrote that piece of music in about five minutes. Wow! And I remember thinking, "Oh gosh, I think this there's something here," and immediately, right when I wrote the melody, I kept thinking, "Oh my goodness, maybe this is should be called Place in This World." Hmm. Wow! And I went. Wayne Kirkpatrick and Amy Grant, and we started yeah. to talk about these letters, and they started yeah. to craft the lyric, and I'm still singing it. It's still one of my favorite things I've ever written. So yeah, I was going to ask if you still play it live. Like, do you have to? Play is that a song you would play every night? Like, whenever you go out? Yeah, there was a phase where I didn't do it. Maybe on a couple, maybe where we were just kind of mainly on the vertical stuff. But this world tour that I did, I played it every night. Yeah. I played I played friends every night. And yeah. Um yeah, and that and, and and you look in the audience and you see you can just kind of see people's faces of yeah. You know, the song was a part of the fabric of their life. I don't know I don't know their story, but yeah. You know, hopefully that song had some sort of redemptive place in their life, you know, but yeah. It's an important song, I think, and that's why I'm still singing it. Yeah. It's hot. My dad would say, Sam, why do you write this song so high? <laughs> it sounds yeah. good up there, Dad. Now I wish I would have listened to him because that, that's a pretty wide range, you know. It, yeah. it gets up there once it modulates. But yeah. I've uh, learned how to kind of use my diaphragm and be able to pull it off every night. It is high. And sometimes yeah. the melody can, like when I've tried to play it too, sometimes the melody can be hard to like. It sh- it almost feels like it's changing keys, like as you're singing it. I don't know. It's it's hard to explain, but um, it's it's an amazing song. It's one that I come back to actually probably every couple of years in my life that has just impacted me. And like I said earlier, I love the Dove performance that you did of that one. I don't even know what year that was. It had to have been early '90s. I don't either. Yeah, because because it was a. Uh, I think you know the re- that was on the Go West Young Man record. So that record was released 33 years ago. So. Wow. Wow. Um, and then it became a hit. I guess it was probably ninety one that it kind of hit the yeah. hit the top chart. So yeah, yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. Well, I also love all the orchestral work you've been doing, like with the worship album that you did recently. Um, yeah. Just beautiful, gorgeous. So thank you, Michael. I just want to say thank you for taking the time to even do this interview, well, and uh, just for the songs that you've mm-hmm. given churches and the recordings that you've given churches is just powerful so thank i'm you. really thankful for i'm thankful for you just keep going like you uh the longevity that you've put into it well I, i'm i'm still going and i i kind yeah. of i kind of feel like the wind is at my back you know all i, I think yeah. all for the right reasons and yeah um yeah so i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna keep going yeah we'll keep doing yeah you're definitely anointed. I, I, I'm thankful. So, uh, you th- thanks for the interview. Good, good to talk to you. Yep. Nice to meet you. See you later. All right. You, well, all right. Have a good one. Yep. Yep. Bye. All right. Such a great conversation with Michael W. Smith. If you have not listened to uh, the worship albums, for sure, go check that out. He's got Worship Forever that just recently came out. All orchestral, beautiful orchestral arrangements of these worship songs. Go listen to that if you have not listened to it. It's really, really beautiful. And then, of course, I would say if you have not watched his Dove performance of Place in This World, go to YouTube and find that. We should have just shown that on this. But anyways, thanks, Michael. 
And uh, thanks for joining us for this interview. And click the subscribe button to make sure you stay tuned for future interviews. See you later. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Couldn't do what we do without you. Let us know in the comments what you thought. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube. Stay tuned. We got a bunch more stuff coming. Appreciate you guys. See ya. Thank you.